we had a reading of the law. Found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make <clears throat> into thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath. You're going to be able to read, man. That is in the water under the earth. <clears throat> okay, finish that. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, being the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show a mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Before the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us see the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Okay. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and maketh a lie. Now that's the reading of the, of the law, sisters and brothers. And when you uh, people tell you that the law is no more, then you, have, you ask them, why is it then it is, that is written in the last book of the last book in the Bible? You want to get in that kingdom, New Jerusalem, you got to keep the law. It's all that simple. You know, this is a lesson I have done in full parts. Because when it comes to the spirit of God, people are all over the place. And the Lord has put it in my mind to try and show you when somebody said the spirit of God, you need to be definitive and what context that is used in before you can really know what you're talking about. I saw where uh, Solomon, the Spirit of God, come up on a uh, Samson brother, and he killed all them Philistines. I saw where uh, uh, a brother ate some honey and said, Spirit, come back to him. And then Jesus uh, 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 raised this young woman and said her spirit came back to her. So we got to look at this, sister and brother, because when it comes to the spirit of God, you have so many takes on it. That's why the Lord calls me to put together a lesson in four parts. So this will be running for you today for three weeks in a row, and the last two are small, so I can do them in one lesson on one Sabbath day. But the, but the title of the lesson today is The Spirit of God in His Many Forms, Part 1, 
the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. Now, you hear people talking all the time about God the Holy Ghost. They say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Well, you're going to find out today that there's, that there's no such thing as God the Holy Ghost. There's God the Father, God the Son, and the Spirit in a, 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 a ministering spirit. Just like a sister sent me an email on this, and I told her to watch these lessons. She said she couldn't watch the whole thing. It was so bad. Huh? So, so I'm going to show you what she couldn't watch. And we're going to get into this, sister and brother, because people love mysteries, <laughs> but you don't deal with mysteries when your salvation is on the line. You need to know exactly what you're dealing with, right. because forever is a long time. And I say all the time, what is it that you won't give up in this temporary life that we live in now in this flesh and blood form that you that will prohibit you from living forever in the, in, in the, in the world to come. Because God created us to live forever. You decide right now on what side of God's kingdom you're going to live in. You're going to live in the good side as God, or you're going to live in the bad side as a candidate in the lake of fire. But what scares me about that, sisters and, bro sisters and brothers, is the word forever. That's a long time. So we're going to get, we're going to deal with the spirit of truth, and we're going to see if, it is, if he is indeed a God, uh, a part of the Trinity, as they say. So we're going to start this in Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew chapter 25. About to come out of this coat because for a long time. Getting hot in here. Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to read one verse, and we're going to dissect this thing, sisters and brothers. We're going to have us a real good look at it, put us a little illustrate, illustration on the screen, because people always tell me the Holy Ghost this and the Holy Ghost that. And have you ever noticed, sisters and brothers, that you have seen Jesus called God, God the Son? And you have seen the Father called God, God the Father. But you have never at no time seen where it said God the Holy Ghost. Right. Not even one time. I tell people, go from Genesis to Revelation and find me God the Holy Ghost. I can show you what God called Jesus God. I can show you in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh -huh. But I can't never find God the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Ghost is merely slang for spirit, sisters and brothers. Holy Spirit. So we're going to look, at, we're going to Matthew 25, and we're going to read verse 31. And we're going to put something up on the board, sisters and brothers. Verse 31. Okay, read it. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory... And all the holy angels with them, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Now, so when Jesus come and all the holy angels with him, holy, who are the holy angels? Those are the ones that did not follow Satan, sister and brother. Right. So when he come, all the holy angels going to come with him. Now, let's go into Hebrews, the first chapter. See, this is how we're going to dissect this and we're going to put this thing together. Scripture at a time, so we will understand what we're dealing with. People do a lot of talking, do a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you something. They're going to be among the ones when they tell Jesus, I've healed the sick in your name. I've fed the hungry in your name. Right. I've done many works in your name. And he's going to say to him, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Why is that? They use his name but then they put their own doctrine on it. Yeah, they do. And the Lord is telling you all over the book that will not fly. Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 6. Hebrews 1 and 6. Okay, go ahead. And again, 
When he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, let all the angels of God worship him. Now, the first begotten is Jesus. He said, let all the angels of God worship him. Go ahead and read. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So he makes his angels spirits, sisters and brothers. All of them. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. <clears throat> but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? No. Go ahead. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So now they are ministering spirits, sisters and brothers. Ministering spirits. Minister means serving spirit. Yes, sir. Sent forth to serve us. We are the heirs of salvation. So we're going to put a little diagram on the board, and we're going to look at something here. Now, you see you got Hebrews uh, 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 where it said ministering spirits. But I want you to put it up the diagram like I have it. Okay, now we're looking at this. We see Matthews 25 and 31 let you know that all the ones that come with Jesus are holy, ain't they? Yes, sir. Holy angels. Hebrews 1 lets you know that he makes his angels spirits. Now, why don't we take holy and spirit and put them together? What is that? What are you looking at now? Holy Spirit. Holy spirits. But it should have been an S on there. I left the S off. But all the angels that did not follow Satan are holy spirits. But they're not God. Yes, sir. That's not hard to understand, is it? We took what Jesus said holy, and then we, in, in Matthew, and, and we saw what the Lord said in, in the Spirit, in, in uh, uh, Hebrew, and we come up with the Holy Spirit. Every angel that did not follow God is holy, and, every, and then he said, are they not all ministering spirits? All is absolute, right? Every one of the spirits, sisters and brothers. See why I'm doing this real slow? Because I'm hoping that this person that could not listen to the rest of it, holy knows long enough and let me finish this thing. Now let's go into John, St. John, the 14th chapter. And we're going to show you some things that uh, uh, nobody pays attention to also. John, chapter 14. She even took issue with me capitalizing the word angel. You know, when I was when 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 I was in school, I don't know how it is nowadays. Usually when you use a name, you capitalize it, don't you? <laughs> a specific designation, you capitalize it. Right. Fourteen. And we're going to start reading at verse 15. St. John 14 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And people don't pay no attention to that. Now, this is Jesus. Where, where, the, where, where you have to keep the man, commandments in the New Testament? You just read it. Ain't no new commandments. It's the same old commandments. Go ahead and read. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter, uh -huh. that he may abide with you forever. Now I'm going to pray to the Father that he may send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Go ahead and read. Even the spirit of truth, uh -huh. whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not. Now even the world of truth, the spirit of truth, who the world can't see because they don't see him. No, they don't because they think he's a God. Go ahead and read. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him. He dwelleth with you and shall abide in you. Now, we, go, we are going to uh, uh, dissect both of these things. Right. So you know him because he's going to dwell with you and shall abide in you. All of a sudden, everybody think, oh, oh, I got him inside of me. Let's be patient a little bit. But read verse 18. Go ahead. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That, but that means he's coming through you through the confidence. Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. But the comforter, 
which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Uh -huh. He shall teach you all things. The first thing is, this comforter, whom the Father will send in his name. He shall teach you all things. Go ahead and read. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And bring all the things into your memory which I have said to you. Lord, he ain't going to bring you no new doctrine, sisters and brothers. No, he ain't. So if you get a Holy Ghost that speaks in your ear and he tell you something that's not written in his book, God didn't send him. Mm -mm. But we're going to dissect this little session here. How then does the comforter comfort you? Right. By letting you know that everything is well in the time of danger. And we're going to give you an example. Let's go into Acts, the 27th chapter. And we're going to look at this comforter. Acts, the 27th chapter. Because he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. Acts, chapter 27. See, it's good to learn, and learn trumps jumping up and down and screaming every time. That's why I took my coat off, because I don't like wiping sweat and hollering <laughs> hot. Right. We up in here to learn how to get salvation, sister and brother. Yeah, we are. And you need to know what is in this creation with you, because God created all of them. Acts 27 and verse 1, read it. When it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners into one named Julius, the centurion of Augustus' band. Now, see, when Paul visited Jerusalem, them Hebrews had lied on Paul. Yeah, Paul taught against the circumcision of the Gentile, but he never taught against the circumcision of the Hebrews. And he was accused of it. And they saw him in the temple trying to make amends with some brothers that had a vow on them. And then they saw him and they started help. And they saw the Gentiles out there. They thought Paul had taken them Gentiles into the temple. So they had a big uproar. And they pulled Paul out of the temple and would have beaten Paul to death had it not been for Roman soldiers. So they pulled Paul out of it. And then Paul had an audience and wanted to talk to the people. And then the people still tried to kill him. Yeah. And when Paul said he wasn't going to get a fair shake, even from the authorities, because they wanted to make the Jews feel good, Paul appealed to Caesar. Therefore, he had to go to Rome. But right here, when they got ready to go, him and other prisoners, Paul told them to look uh, uh this is the wrong time of the year. You shouldn't be sailing. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9, and go ahead. And when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, uh -huh. Sirs, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, uh -huh. not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Now, Paul admonished them, look, so I proceeded, this ship, this, this, is, uh, this, this ship is bad. We shouldn't go there. There's going to be a loss of ship, even a loss of life. But who did they listen to? Go ahead and read. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. So they believed the ship owner more than they believed Paul, sisters and brothers. I guess so. Because he was the ship, he's supposed to know the weather. Right. But then the Lord was working on Paul. So skip now to verse 14 and let's see what happened. Verse 14. Go ahead. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euclidion. When the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. So we're going to call this Eurocliton. We're going to call it a hurricane. All of a sudden it hit come on that ship while they were sailing and they couldn't deal with it so what they did was they just let it go and let the hurricane take it where it will. Right. Because Paul had told them this, this could happen to them. And now they was in the middle of a hur hurricane in the middle of a ship. And what happened? In the sea. But go ahead and read. That was in the 15. 15? Well, skip down to verse 20. 
Verse 20 in your head. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, Go ahead. all hope that we should be saved was taken then away. So it got so bad then. They hadn't seen the, the stars in, in, in months, in days, rather. Right. And that ship was out of control. They had decided we're all dead. And under any other circumstances, they might have been dead. Yeah. But then Paul had an ace in the hole. Go ahead and read. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened to me and not have loosed from Crete to have gained this harm and loss. In other words, I told you not to do this. Right. I told you so. Then you wouldn't have gained this if you had only listened to, and wouldn't have had these losses. If you only listen to me. But, what else? Go ahead and read. And I exhort you to be of good cheer. Go ahead. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Go ahead. But of the ship. He said, but I, I'm exhorting you to be of good cheer. Rejoice, because ain't nobody going to die. The ship going to be lost, but you're not going to die. Right. Why would he make this statement? Go ahead and read. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, uh -huh. saying, Sit not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee, thee all them that sail with thee. So that is good news, ain't it? Yeah, it is. You, you thinking that you're going to die? All of a sudden, this angel stand by you, so don't worry about it, man. God, God wants you to get to Rome and, and stand before Caesar, and all these ones is on the ship. He given them to you, Paul. In other words, if Paul hadn't been on that ship, all them guys would have died. Oh, two. He gave them to Paul. Finish that. What well, first, sirs? Be of good cheer. Uh huh. For well, I believe, God, this shall be even as it was told me. Now, if that's not confidence, what is? You thinking you're going to die? Right. All hope is lost. And that angel show up. Don't worry about it. God got you. You're going to get to Rome, and you're going to take all these people there with you because God is going to give them to you. That's his how to comfort, comfort you. It's yeah. like sometimes you having a hard time in life, something really going ugly, and then the Lord put it in your mind and show you something, and you see it. He might show up, might not show up physically, but he might plant it in your mind. Don't worry about it. This is what I got in plan. You see, oh, yes, sir. The Lord's going to deliver me. That happens, sisters and brothers. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in here have had time when they figure it was over with. And then the Lord did something or showed him something to let them know, don't worry about it. Right. This too shall pass and you're going to be all right. That's it, that is how he covered you. But how he do it? He do it but through the angel. That's why I say I'm the comforter. And I will not leave you comforter. I'm going to come to you. How is it going to come to you? Through the angel. What did Paul say stood by him this night? Angel. An angel. Angel is spirit. And if he was sent from God, a Holy Spirit stood by him. Or either the Holy Ghost stood by him. And said, so don't worry about it, Paul. God got you. Yes, sir. Now all these men. And they listened to Paul, and the Lord delivered Every one of them, sisters and brothers. Every one of them. But then the Lord says something. He shall dwell with you and in you. We're going to look into that too. See, everybody, when you're the Lord talking to people, people think that God is talking to them individually all the time. My personal Savior. I have never read that in the book. Sure, he saved you individually, but when he's talking to People, he's not talking to each individual. I'm going to show you what I'm saying here. Let's go into Haggai, the second chapter. Haggai, chapter 2. Because I know a lot of times I figured, hey, I can't handle it. I ain't going to make it. Well, I can't handle this situation. And the Lord come and show me that it ain't no thing. And I find great comfort in knowing that I can. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay attention to that. Yeah, you do. 
Because sometimes things get so bad that you're going to die from worrying about it before the real problem get there. Right. <laughs> problem evapor evaporating, you gonna, because you haven't had been confident, you're already sick and might die from your worry. Don't work like that, sisters and brothers. But the Lord, even the Lord himself, have a confidence. And he is going to be in you and also with you, sisters and brothers. And we're going to have a look and see what we're talking about here. It's Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, uh -huh. and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people. See, now, this is when, when uh, Cyrus let all them Jews go back to rebuild the temple. And Zerubbabel was the governor, and he was, and he was also a, uh, a Levite, and he was commissioned by Cyrus to go back and build this temple. So when they started, when they built the temple, <laughs> the people that looked at it, we ain't got time to read all of this, some of them were rejoicing and some of them was crying. The older guys, why would they be crying? Because compared to what, what uh, 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 Solomon has built, this temple looked like an outhouse. <laughs> So what did the Lord say to him? That's why the word came to Zerubbabel, the governor, and, and, uh, uh, and the high priest and the people and said, saying this, who, verse 3, go ahead. Who was left among you that saw this house in her first glory? In other words, who among you that are old timers that saw when it first was built? Go ahead and read. And how do you see it now? Go ahead. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing. That let you know it was nothing. But look what the Lord said to him. Go ahead. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, <coughs> said the Lord. Go ahead. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord, and work. For I am with you, said He's the Lord of hosts. He said, I want you to be strong, though. Joshua, Zerubbabel, and all the people, be strong, because I am with you. Go ahead and read. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. According to the word that I covenanted with you when I, came, when I brought you out of Egypt. Go ahead and read. So my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. So my spirit remain among you, speak not. Among you, sisters and brothers. He wasn't saying his spirit is in you, but he, when he said in you, he mean among you. Like right. he told Israel, when he brought him out of Egypt, <clears throat> so that spirit that's within you, gonna, I mean, so that stranger that's within you going to come up very high, and you're going to come down very low. Who was the stranger? That was made up the mixed multitude. Right. So when he said he's going to be with you and he's going to be in you, that don't mean that he is going to be inside of you. He said, according to what I covenanted when I brought you out of Egypt, my Spirit remain among you. Let's go and show you the spirit he's talking about is a holy angel. Let's yeah. go in the, back when he brought us out of Egypt. Let's right. go back to Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus chapter 23. So that's what we got to do, sister and mother. We just have to look at this thing yeah. so we can get some understanding instead of going out on a tangent and making statements that we we don't understand. Exodus 23. And we're going to start at verse 20. Exodus 23. And we're going to start reading at verse 20. Exodus 23 and 20. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. He said, I sent an angel before you. 
to keep you in the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Go ahead and read. Beware of him uh -huh. and obey his voice. Provoke him not. He would not pardon your transgressions. He don't have the latitude to pardon your transgression. He can only do what God tell him to do. So he told you to beware of him. Obey his voice. Don't provoke him. Because he will not forgive your transgression. He going to do to you whatever I told him. So he got his marching orders just like you got your marching orders. Go ahead and read. My name is in him. He said, because my name is in him. And that takes you to the new book. He's going to send you the Holy Ghost in my name. The name has always been in him. Go ahead and read. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies Go ahead. and an adversary unto thine adversaries. If you obey his voice, his voice, and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy to your enemy. Go ahead and read. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in into the Amorites and to the Hittites and the Parasites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now, look at, at this system, brother. The Lord told you in Haggai that my, according to when I covenanted with you when I brought you out of Egypt, my spirit is with, among you, didn't he? Yeah. Why, why is he not using spirit here? Because an angel is what? Yeah. He's a spirit. And he's there. And he went for him to cut all these people off that the Lord wanted him to cut off. But then the Lord gave Israel a directive. What was that? Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. Nor do after their works. Nor do after their works. Go ahead. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And I want you to utterly overthrow them, and I want you to break down their enemy. The Lord wanted Israel to go in there, whatever Canaanites that didn't drive out, kill. He didn't want none of them among them. Because he knew if, I, if you stayed among them, they're going to teach you how to deal with their pagan gods, and I'm going to turn against you. So he said, I want you to wipe everything out concerning them. Right. So let's see what, if Israel obeyed the angel when he spoke the word to him. Let's go into Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. See, all we have to do is be patient. Sometimes people don't have patience to learn how to get salvation. Right. And don't have a mind that's broad enough to say, I'm going to look at this from another flavor. Mm-hmm. You might be surprised if you have the patience and your mind is broad enough what you might find. Right. Isaiah 63, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. Isaiah 63, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. Yeah. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praise <laughs> of the Lord according to all that the Lord had bestowed on us. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he had bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Now, this is the mercy of the Lord that he is telling you about. Go ahead and read. Well, he said, surely they are my people, uh -huh. children that would not lie. Boy, boy, what did he say that for? <laughs> Israel lied to drop. But anyway, go ahead. So he was their savior. So he was their savior. Go ahead. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. Uh-huh. And the angel of his presence saved them. And the angel of his presence saved them. Stick the word presence in your mind, because you're going to run into that again. And the angel of his presence did what? Saved, saved them. them. Go ahead. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. Uh-huh. He bared them and carried them all the days of old. Go ahead. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. When did the Holy Spirit get involved in this thing? I thought we were dealing with the angel of his presence. Because that angel is spirit and he is holy. Yes, sir. The angel of his presence. So they rebelled against him. They 
vexed his Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. No, the Lord told you to obey him. Didn't he tell you that? Yeah. So don't y'all obey him. So obey him now and do all that I said, because he will not pardon. Forgive your transgression. Mm -hmm. So what did they do that vexed this angel and turned him against him? Right. Let's go into Judges, the first chapter, and see. Judges chapter 1. So we have made the collection because he mentioned angel and Holy Spirit in the same scripture here, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Because the angel is holy and he is a spirit. But people don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with the spookery. You understand? Always something you don't understand. Lord, won't you understand everything that's written in the pages of this book? Mm -hmm. Everything. If he didn't want you to understand it, he wouldn't have had it written because he is not a vain God. Why is he going to have something written that he don't want me to understand? Right. If he didn't want me to understand it, he wouldn't have had it written. That's why when John mm -hmm. was writing and you got them seven thunders, John got ready to write. He's sealing up. Write it now. He didn't want us to know what the seven thunders said, um. so he told him not to write it. Right. And that tells me the end of whatever he had written, he want me to know about it. That's just, I used to say common sense. But people that think level, that's rare sense. <laughs> <laughs> Judges 1, and we're going to read one verse. This is telling all. God told him to go in and kill them all, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Kill them all, destroy their God, burn everything up. Leave nothing. But what did Israel do? Verse 28, verse 28, read it. And it came to pass, and Israel was strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Wait a minute. The Lord told them not to do that, didn't he? No. Don't make no league with these people. No. So if you go put them on the tribute, that means that you'd have made an agreement. You bring me oil and wine and gold and corn or whatever. I'll let you live. But God said, kill them all. They did. So when they did that, that vexed this Holy Spirit. And he turned against him. Look what he said. Let's go into Judges 2, chapter 2 and verse 1. 2 and 1. Okay, read it. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum uh -huh. and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt. So we're talking the same angel, ain't we? Yep. I made you to go up out of Egypt. Go ahead and read. And I brought you into the land which I swear in your fathers. Go ahead. And I said, I would never break my covenant with you. Now, why is he talking like he's God? Because right. the Lord said, obey his voice and do all that I say. Yes, sir. The words of the angel, the, 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 the uh, voice is the angels, but the word is God. I go. I made you to come up out of Egypt. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Go ahead and read. Ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. I told you that. Go ahead. Ye shall throw down their altars. We read that, didn't we? Yeah, go we ahead did. and read. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Uh huh. Why have you done this? He said, But you haven't obeyed me. Now the angel tell him, Now you haven't obeyed my voice. The words of the Lord, but it's his voice. Why have you done this? Right. Go ahead. Well, for I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. Go ahead. But they shall be as thorns in your sides. Go ahead. And their God shall be a snare unto you. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. It was too late, wasn't it? Too late. Israel do that all the time. You're going to sin against God. When drummer come, you're going to cry, Lord, have mercy. He had mercy, and yeah, you yeah. rejected it. Because when he told you not to do it, that was your mercy. Yeah, it was. But you rejected it. Now it's consequences time. And people don't understand that. That's why people do stuff, and they get by for a long time, but you do not get away. I pray to the Lord all the time, pay me for my sins now, not at the harvest time. 
Right. Because if it's a harvest time, I'm going to the lake of fire. Yeah. So now, they vexed his Holy Spirit, which was a holy angel, sister and brother. And the Lord gave us everything we de- needed. Let's go into Nehemiah. Nehemiah, the 19th chapter. The ninth chapter, I'm sorry. Nehemiah, the ninth chapter. But we don't pay attention. We like a whole lot of hollering and screaming. We like to feel good. Well, you know, you, I go there, but y'all don't praise God enough. The best praise you can give God is learn how to obey his voice and do it. That's yes, the praise he wants. Yes, sir. Because that old saying, <coughs> they said in the old time that an empty wagon is the one that makes the most noise. <laughs> you ain't learning nothing, so you're going to have a lot of noise like you doing something. Nehemiah 9 and verse 7, read it. Thou the Lord, the God who did his choose Abram and brought us him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham. So it's telling you about the Lord and what they did for us. He's the one that took Ab- Abram and changed his name to Abraham because he made him a father in many nations. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai uh-huh. and spake it with them from heaven. And, and we all, he did that when he gave the Ten Commandments, didn't yeah, he? Did. Go ahead and read. And gave us them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. God did that himself. Go ahead and read. And made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath. Now, now, now who's made it known unto them thy holy Sabbath? The Sabbath day is the Lord's Sabbath day. It's not the Jews' Sabbath day. Right. I made it so known to them your holy Sabbath, Father. Go ahead and read. And commanded them precepts, uh-huh. statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. So he brought them precepts, statutes, and laws. He just didn't have them go there and feel good. He taught them something. And he did something else, too. Skip down to verse 20 and read it. Go ahead. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them. Thou gavest also to them thy good spirit to instruct them. Didn't the Lord say the cover is going to lead and guide you in all yes, truth? Yes, sir. Don't you have to be taught? Yep. You haven't taught what the truth is or what a lie is, then how can you walk in the truth? So you gave him your good spirit to instruct them. Go ahead. And withheld is not thy manner from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. So he gave you everything you needed. But the big thing here, he gave you this angel, which is this good spirit, sisters and brothers, to instruct you. He wants you to be taught. That's why I tell people, look like somebody gets suspicious. You go to church every Sunday, and you get a verse read to you, then you deal with a whole lot of hoop, hollering, and all that. And you haven't read three verses out of the book. Right. What? Have you been taught? But still, you got this big book. Yeah. You said, God ain't no vain, God. Why do I have this great big Bible and I don't te- and I don't, you don't teach me none of it? See, sisters and brothers, the Lord operate through angels. Right. And the only time that the Lord didn't operate through angels is when he came himself in the flesh. Angel went back to heaven. But when Jesus left, he sent the angel back. Mm-hmm. His Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost. That's the way he operates. Let's go into St. John, the 16th chapter. And he told you these things, but don't nobody pay no attention. St. John, chapter 16. Because they want to make it, I don't know, a puff of smoke or something. St. John 16, and we're going to start reading that verse 5, 16 and 5. Because you need to know these. If the, if the Lord didn't, wasn't required for you to notice these things that I'm teaching you today, he wouldn't have had it in the book. He would have told 
John, the same thing he told him when he's on Isle of Patmos when he heard them seven thunders. Seal it up. Write it not. Right. But this is written. He wants you to know these things. Verse 5. Go ahead and read. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asking me, whether go or thou? This is Jesus, and I go my way, because he's getting ready to go on back to heaven. He said, and ain't nobody asking me where I'm going. Go ahead and read. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. It's expedient for you that I go away. Go ahead and read. Why do I go not away? Uh -huh. The comforter would not come unto you. No, why is it we're going to show you? But he said, if I don't go away, the comfort will not come unto you. Go ahead and read. If I depart, I will send him unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Why is it that this God, the Holy Ghost, always got to be sent by Jesus? He's sent by the Father, but it's through Jesus. Right. But he said, if I don't go, he will not come unto you. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. I have yet many things to say unto you. Go ahead. You cannot bear them now. And, you know, and that's why I tell people all the time, don't try to teach people the whole Bible in one day. Right. They can't bear too much teaching. Sometimes you burn them out. Give them a little bit and let them digest it. He said, look, I have many things I want to tell you, but you can't bear them now. You ain't ready. Go ahead right. and read. I'll be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. I'll be it when he, the spirit of truth, will come. Go ahead. He will guide you into all truth. Uh-huh. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He said he's not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak only what he hear. Go ahead and read. He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. That means this guy informs you. Yes, sir. He tells you what God is going to do to this world. And give you signs what God is going to do to this world. Go ahead and read. He shall glorify me. Uh huh. He shall receive a mind and show it unto you. And he's going to glorify me. He's going to receive a mind and show it unto you. Go ahead. All things that the Father have are mine. Uh huh. Therefore said I that he shall take a mind and show it unto you. So he said, All things that the Father have are mine. That means Jesus got it from the Father. Father gave it to the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit of the holy angel, and he sent it to man, sent it to Israel. Yes, sir. And then Israel is supposed to spread it among the nation. That, sisters and brothers, is the protocol. That's the way it works, and it don't work any other way. So now, if the Father gave it to Jesus, Jesus gave it to the angel, angel bring it to Israel, then that let me know, understand why this is written in 1 John, the fifth chapter. Once I know the protocol, this ain't no mystery to me. I know exactly what it is. So let's go to 1 John, fifth chapter. Ain't nothing mysterious about this now because we know the protocol. Father give it to the son. Son give it to the angel. And the angel bring it to Israel. Mm -hmm. And Israel scattered this all over the world. That is the protocol. And the angel ain't going to break the protocol. That's why when he told Peter, a uh, cold Cornelius, he could have told Cornelius everything that God wanted him to know, but he couldn't do that. He had to send him to Israel because the protocol cannot be broken. And the protocol had been broken by the world, therefore the world is in ignorance. Right. I mean, almost abject ignorance. And you tell them that, and they call, well, you see, you shouldn't be insulting people. How do you go insult somebody and tell them the truth? First John 5, and we're going to read one verse. First John 5 and verse 7. St. John 5 and verse 7. Okay, go ahead. But there are three that bear record in heaven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Go ahead. The Father. The Father. The Word. The Word. We know, we know, we know First Corinthians, I mean, it's Revelation, the 19th chapter, tell you who the Word is, don't it? Yes, sir. That's Jesus. 
Because it said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You got two. So we're going to see if this other guy is God. The Father, the Word, go ahead. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. These three are one. And these three are one. And we're going to look at it. I never forget when me and the elders, the elders called them deacon then. That's before I died, fired the deacon board and got me some elders. Because they tried to fire me. But anyway, I'm going <laughs> to let bygones be bygones. <laughs> but, but the whole thing is, we, me and the deacons went to confront because a guy set it up where we're going to have a uh, debate with some Nazarene preachers. And they all got up and tell them what they believe. And then, and then nobody asked them nothing. Everybody, when I got up, told what I believe, then they started asking me questions. And this is one of the questions they believe. Do you believe in the Trinity? I said, nope. Not God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You don't treat in the dreaded? Nope. But I'll tell you why. Even my deacons didn't know that. The Lord had dropped that little tidbit on me the Sabbath day before the debate. <laughs> That's why I know God is God. Yeah. He knew that this guy was going to answer this, ask me that right. question. He knew it. I was sitting in my den, read the book, and I read it, and I knew. Okay. So I told him, no, I don't believe in it. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, he quoted it. Right. But what about this three that bear witness in heaven? Let's go look at them. Let's go into Revelation, the first chapter. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. I mean, it shocked them all. And I was looking like the canary, like the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> Put them in turmoil, too. They start arguing with one another. Verse 1, go ahead and read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. How many is that? One. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him. How many is that? Two. Go ahead. To show unto his servant things which must surely come to pass. Go ahead. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. That angel, how many is that? Three. And all of them in heaven? Yes, sir. And when he gave it to his servant John, finish that verse. Finish verse two. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So now, the Father, the Son, and the angel bear records. And when John got it, it was three that bear record in heaven and one that bear record in the earth of the word of God. That's the three. No more. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Angel. I want you to put that up on board. We're going to look at it. Because we want you to understand what we're doing here. So I'm waiting, brothers. Put it up. Now look at this. Father, Jesus, comforter. Father, Jesus, Angel, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, God the Father, God the Son, and what is that third one? Ministering Spirit, an angel, sisters and brothers. That's the Holy Spirit. The angel that brings the message. And once the Lord went back to heaven, he sent this angel back. Then he said, it is expedient that I go, yep. because I go not. The Holy Ghost will not come, which is the spirit of truth. But if I go, I will send him to you. And let's look and see, he did, and see that he did this exactly the way he said he was going to do it. Let's go into Acts, the first chapter. Acts chapter 2. See, the Bible bear out the truth, sisters and brothers. It don't bear out beliefs and emotions. It only bears out the truth. That's why Jesus said, look, I got to go. If I don't go, as long as I'm here, the Holy Ghost ain't going to show up. Oh, yeah. 
I don't need him here. I brought the message. Acts 1 and verse 1. Acts 1 and 1. Okay, read. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. See, the former treaties I made, O Theophilus, that means, O oh, most excellent. Some mm -hmm. guy called in, some of that's somebody's name. <laughs> that means, O oh, most excellent. <laughs> of all Jesus began both to do and teach. Go ahead and read. Until the day in which he was taken up. Until the day in which he was taken up. Go ahead and read. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And after that, he through the Holy Ghost have given commandments to his apostles, apostles which he had chosen. He through the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Now, let's give you an example of that. Let's go into Acts the 8th chapter. Acts chapter 8. It's all here, sisters and brothers. You notice he didn't use the word God the Holy Ghost? Mm -mm. Mm. Acts 8. Acts chapter 8. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. This is when, when uh, uh, the Lord sent Philip down there to intercept this, to intercept this unit, which was a treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. And we're going to pay attention the way this is worded here. 8 and 26. Okay, go ahead. The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south and to the way that goeth down from Jerusalem and to Gaza, which is desert. Now, this is the angel of the Lord. Now, he went and got Philip the apostle. I want you to go on down now. Right from Jerusalem, that leadeth to Gaza. Go ahead and read. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, uh -huh. who had charge over all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for the worship. Now I know this Ethiopian here that's coming from Jerusalem to worship. I know that was a philosopher. Why was he going to Jerusalem to worship? Because the Lord commanded Israel, all male, to come before him three times a year. So now he went down there and he accepted him. Who sent him down there? The angel of the Lord. Ain't mm -hmm. that correct? Yes, sir. Read the next verse. Go ahead. As we're returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Go ahead. And the spear said in the Philip. Then the what? The spear. The spear. What happened? God, the Holy Spirit, walked in there and told the angel, I got it now. I'm going somewhere here. Didn't say it wasn't like that. Mm. Then the spirit said in the the Philip finished that. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Go near and join yourself to the chariot. Mm -hmm. The spirit. Why is it that it start out the angel? Because angel and spirit are interchangeable. Right. And this particular angel that was sent by God is a holy angel. Are a holy spirit. Or you can call him the Holy Ghost. But he is not God. No, he ain't. He is a servant spirit. That's what minister means. That's what a lot of preachers go, well, I'm minister so-and-so. Who do you serve? You say you're a minister? You ain't serving the people because you ain't teaching them the truth. You ain't serving God because you ain't teaching them the truth. So the angel and the spirit are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Now let's go and look at this protocol. Let's go into Acts. The 10th chapter, Acts chapter 10, because people do not understand the protocol. That's why the world is in ignorance right now. Mm -hmm. And when I hear the word Hebrew Israelite, oh, uh, 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 y'all don't got nothing to do with Jesus. We got everything to do with Jesus. Yeah, we do. We carry his water. And unless we bring it to you, you don't get to drink of his water. That's just the way it is. That's it. I'm not saying it as one that's bragging. I'm saying it as one that's giving you the facts so you will know where to come to drink. That's why I don't understand my Hebrew brothers trying to run all the strangers away. 
the Gentiles and everything and the white folks and everybody else talking about them. Look, mister, you carry the water for the Lord. Why are you telling them they can't drink and that's your only job is to give them drink? You better start thinking. Right. Acts 10 and 1. Now, let's see this guy here. He was a, a Gentile and he was an Italian. Yeah, he was. Go ahead and read. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house. Go ahead. Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, that was his big advantage. He feared God with all his house. And he prayed always, and he helped the people. Mm -hmm. This man didn't know the God of Israel, but he knew there was a God somewhere. But the whole thing is, even a stranger, if he don't know God, if he is serious in his heart, the Lord will introduce himself to yes, him. Yes, sir. By way of the protocol. That's what I tell brothers all the time. Why are you running these people away that's trying to listen to God? Why are you on the streets insulting people? Instead of saying, come on here, I got something to show you that you might save your life with. You'd be surprised how many would come then. But go ahead and read what verse? Three. Go ahead. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, go ahead. Cornelius. Uh-huh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Go ahead. And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. He said, now, Lord is watching what you do. They come before him, and look what he's he going to tell him. Go ahead. And now send me in the Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He still tells thee what thou oughtest to do. Now, you think that this angel didn't know what God wanted the Cornelius to know? He knew it, but he couldn't tell it. You know why? Oh. Because he remembered what happened to Satan. Right. And he didn't want it to happen to him. Oh, he didn't. He ain't going to break the code of call. So mm. he said, look, Cornelius, Lord has seen your faith. He's seen your diligence. But some things, but you don't know me, so I'm going to send you Cornelius, and he is going to introduce you to me. And he's going to tell you what you always to do. Right. Can't break the protocol, sister and brother. Protocol is the father give it to the son, the son give it to the angel, and the angel brings it to the Israelite. Yes, this right. angel went to the Gentile, but he didn't bring the message. He sent him to the people that have the answer, which is Israel. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19, because God had to get Peter ready for this. Because most people don't know that God, in the, Jesus in the beginning, he told Israel not to go in the way of the Gentiles. Right. Neither go to no sin in Samaria, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the Lord had to prepare Peter for this. Otherwise, Peter would say, no, I ain't going down there. Yep. And he quoted, he would have quoted what the Lord said in Matthew. Mm -hmm. So the angel had to get Peter ready. That's when he let this sheep now with all kind of four-footed beasts and Wild animals and told Peter, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And P Peter said, hey, Lord, I've never eaten anything clean, uh, unclean uh, 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 in my life. He said, what the Lord have made clean, let no man call unclean. Right. People use that, see now, you can eat anything now. Wasn't talking about food. No. <laughs> it was preparing him to bring in somebody that's outside of Israel. Because Jesus hadn't let, left the directive. It was a law. Right. Because Israel wasn't ready to go teach nobody because we was too dumb. He had to get us back on track first. So what happened? Skip now to verse 19. Because once he let that sheet now, Peter know that the Lord wasn't telling him, you can eat pig. No, he wasn't. He was trying to figure it out. Go ahead and read. While Peter thought on the vision. While Peter thought on the vision, because he was trying to figure it out. What is it that the Lord is trying to tell me? Right. Go ahead and read. The Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. The Spirit said unto him, 
Behold, three men seek thee. Go ahead and read. Arise therefore. Arise therefore. And get thee down and go with them. Why? Thou nothing, for I have sent them. Who sent them? The Lord. The Spirit was talking to Peter, though. Yeah, he was. Who sent them? The angel. When he told Cornelius, send for one Peter. The same angel went on down there and told Peter, now, you got some men seeking you. I sent them. Right. In the beginning, he was called an angel. Here, he's called a spirit. We're talking about the same being, sisters and brothers. This is what we after. This is the same being. That was, the last, that was 22, right? Oh, 22. Huh? Yeah, that was in. So he's letting you know that look. No, no, no. Go ahead and read. I'm sorry. That was 20. Go ahead. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent to him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am him whom ye see. Uh huh. What is the cause whereof ye are come? Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feared God. And of good report among all the nations of the Jews uh -huh. was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into this house and to hear words of thee. He said, now, Cornelia, a centurion, a man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel. Right. And holy angel. And, he, and the angel told him to send for you. Simon. And Peter turned around and let us know that it was a spirit that was sent to him. So if this angel is holy, did he say holy angel? Mm -hmm. And he was a spirit, what's that make him? Holy spirit. This might not seem much to you, sister and brother, but look how the world is messed up. The world is messed up. The Lord have an innumerable amount of angels because he have a job for all of them. And they have their job and they do it. So in this particular one that the Lord sent to instruct people and tell them what is to, where to do and where to go and how to do it, have a name. This particular one that we've been dealing with. Let's see what his name is. Let's go into Daniel's the eighth chapter. Daniel's the eighth chapter. See, we read this book, the book will tell it all to you. Yeah, it will. Lord said, surely I would do nothing but reveal my secrets to my prophets. The word nothing is absolute, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So what am I going to call this guy that you sending me all the time and giving me messages? We're going to see what we're going to call him. Daniel's the 8th chapter, and we're going to start reading verse 1, and then we're going to skip. 8 and 1. Okay, read it. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, Go ahead. a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel. Now, this, this is uh, Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's son. Go ahead. After that which appeared unto me at the first. Okay, he said, look, during the time, Vision of the Lord appeared unto him, and he wanted to know what this vision is. Skip down to verse 15, because he started praying for the Lord to show him what this vision is, because he didn't understand it. Verse 15, go ahead. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and saw for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Go ahead. And I heard a man's voice between the bank of Uli, which is called, and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. Now, I heard a voice, he said, from beyond the bank of Uli, I said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. You know, it's really strange, strange sisters and brothers. The Bible gives you name of two other angels, Gabriel and Michael. I don't know where Raphael came from. <laughs> and all them other angels. And both of these guys, Gabriel and Michael, play a major part in God's plan. So now, he said, Gabriel, do what? 
make this man understand the vision. My spirit would lead and guide you into all truth. Go ahead and read. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Go ahead. But he said unto me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, he said he's afraid and he stood up and he fell on his face. And he came to do what? Understand, O son of man. You can't understand when you jumping and shouting and screaming. Go ahead and read. That was the end of 17. That's the end of 17? Yes, sir. So he said, for the time of the end shall be the vision. So Gabriel is the one that he taught. Now that was under Belshazzar, the king of Babylon. Yeah. But then the Lord knocked Belshazzar off, and the Lord sent another message in somebody else's time. Let's see who brought it. Let's go on to Daniel the night chapter. Daniel the night chapter. We're going to start reading that verse 1. Daniel's 9 and 1. Okay, go ahead. In the first year, Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years. Uh-huh. Well, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. See, Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah let him know that the Lord was going to let Nebuchadnezzar knock Israel, uh, Ju uh, Judah off, Jerusalem off, and it was not going to be occupied again by Jews for 70 years. He learned, he read that, but still, he didn't understand all he wanted, needed to understand. Go ahead and read. And I set my face into the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ash. Go ahead. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy of them that love him and of them that keep his commandments. So now he was praying to the Lord. So the Lord answered him. Skip now while he was praying. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. I think that's right. Uh, 20. Uh, 20? Yeah. Where were we at? We was the end of three. We was the end of three? Yep. We had four. And then Skip down to here. 20. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. Verse 20. Go ahead. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sin of my people Israel, presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, uh -huh. he, even the man Gabriel. He called him a man, but we wasn't no, he wasn't no man. No. Go ahead. Whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being called to fly swiftly. When the last time you seen a man fly? Yeah. Being called to fly swiftly? Go ahead. Touch me about the time of the evening oblation. Go ahead. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. That's why he is called the spirit of truth. He come to tell you the truth of what God wants you to do. Right. I come to give you skill and understanding. I'm going to inform you what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. This Holy Spirit. We know what his name is now. Gabriel. So when he wanted to send a message to somebody else in the new book, New Testament, let's go look at it. Let's go into Luke, the first chapter. Luke chapter 1. That's why I was puzzled. A little woman told me where I, had, I couldn't even finish looking at it. <laughs> no, you got a little God in your head. And standing there blocking it, so I ain't going to let you get no salvation. You probably emailed me an ugly letter now. That's all right. I love you. That's why I'm going to tell you the truth. I want to save your life. Luke 1 and verse 5. Luke 1 and 5. Then we're going to skip. St. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, her name was Elizabeth. See, now, remember the Levit Levitical priesthood was in full swing. Mm -hmm. 
Because the Levitical priesthood was not replaced until Jesus died on the cross and you went under the new covenant. So Zechariah, his thing was the light incense. But skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar incense. Go ahead. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Uh huh. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So he told him, Fear not, Zacharias. The Lord had heard your prayer, and your wife Elizabeth is going to get pregnant. You're going to have a son. Right. Zechariah kind of found that hard to do. They did. To believe. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8, what did he say? Go ahead. Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? Why shall I know this? For I am an old man. For I'm 80 years old. And my wife well stricken in years. And my wife is, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. For I'm an old man. And my wife is well stricken in age. Go ahead and read. And the angel answered and said unto him, Listen to what this guy, this angel going to say. Go ahead. I am Gabriel. I am Gabriel. That stand in the presence of God. That stand in the presence of God. And then the Lord said he sent the angel of his presence to instruct him. Yes, sir. This is the same one. If he stand in his presence, ain't he in heaven? Yeah. He come out of there only to bring a message. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of of God. Finish that. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And I'm sent to tell you that you're going to have a baby, mister. I don't care if you're 200 years old and you're old lady and 199 years old. <laughs> if God said you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a baby. Right. It's all that's, that simple. That's but it. What did he call him? Gabriel. Gabriel. But then Gabriel's job was not through. Skip now to verse 26. Verse 26. And go ahead. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Oh, so he had another job. Yeah, he did. Angel Gabriel was sent to Joseph. Uh, uh, go ahead and read. And of, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Go ahead. Of the house of David. Uh -huh. And the virgin name was Mary. And the virgin name was Mary. Skip down to verse 30 and give the message. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Uh -huh. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Go ahead. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So who brought the message? Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel brought it. Gabriel was the one that was leading Israel in the wilderness. Gabriel was the one that they rebelled against. He was the one that come up from Gilgal to Bochan and told him. Yeah. Y'all done did this and did that. Why did you do that? Then he told Daniel in Belshazzar's time. Then he told Daniel what to write. In the Persian time. Yep. Now he come on down and told Zechariah that he was going to have John the Baptist. Then he told Mary and John that they were going to have Jesus, sister and brother. Same angel. Same angel. Right. Because the Lord operates through angels, sister and brother. All of them have a job. Gabriel's job was light bringer, a uh, light bearer. What was that name? Lucifer. But the Lord found iniquity in Satan, which was Lucifer, and he was never called Lucifer again, the light bringer, because he didn't bring no truth. He brought lies. God fired him, made him a destroying angel, and gave his job to Gabriel. Now, Gabriel is Lucifer. He is the light bringer, which is the true sister and brother. What are we talking? Physical beings. They can change shapes to anything. And we're going to give you a good example. 
Let's go and look at the baptism of Jesus and see what happened. Luke, the third chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 21. Luke 3 and 21. Maybe the person couldn't finish this because it just made too much sense. I, I can't do I can't with this kind of sense. I'm used to listening to nonsense. <laughs> Luke, the third chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 21. 3 and 21. 3 and 21. Okay, go ahead. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens was open. Now, being baptized and praying and the heavens was open. Go ahead and read. And the Holy Ghost descended in the body shape like a dove. And the Holy him. Ghost descended, pay attention now, in the bodily shape of a dove. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. Thou art my beloved son, and in thee I am well pleased. Let's investigate and see what is uh, that dove-like spirit. Ain't no big mystery, sisters and brothers. Let's go into St. John, the first chapter. St. John chapter 1. I'm messing somebody's game up. They like mystery. The mystery <laughs> of the gospel. <laughs> it's only a mystery because you don't know nobody. Right. And you don't know nobody because you didn't take the time to pray God and seek it out. This is no mystery. Verse 29. St. John 1. And verse 29, 1 and 29, read it. The next day John said Jesus coming into him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. John, so John knew who he was, the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. Skip down to verse 32. Verse 32 and go ahead. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Now, we're talking about the same thing. He saw that, didn't he? Because yeah, he, he did. baptized it. I saw it. Go ahead and read. And I knew him not, but he hath sent me to baptize with water. Uh -huh. The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Now, he said, told him, said, look, I didn't know who he was, but a voice told me, the one that you see, the Spirit of God, to sin like a dove and light up on him, he the one. Let's see what that spirit was. Skip down to verse 51. Verse 51. Verse 51. Read it. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. We didn't see no angel. We saw a spirit of dove in the spirit of a dove, in the shape of a dove. Well, what is it that Jesus said that ascended on him? Read it again. He said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Said nothing about no shape of the dove. If it's the angel, they can do, shape whatever they want, sister. Right. You know? So when that spirit of God descended in the bodily form of a dove, that was merely an angel. Then you heard that voice. Here's my son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Who said that? Was it the father? Let's see. Let's go into St. John, the fifth chapter. St. John, chapter 5.
Because I remember one of these guys that was, was to believe that God was a trinity with the three personalities. And, and no, he had had somebody talking about God was a trinity, but it's one individual with three personalities. And he's going to ask me, years ago in Washington Park, well, if Jesus down there getting baptized, then who is he? Who did this speaking? What you talking about? Well, he's supposed to be one person with three personalities. That's who taught you that. You ain't never heard that come out of my mouth. <laughs> you should go to the ones that told you that. I wouldn't even ask him. If he was that dumb, I, was, I, I don't argue with dead folks. Five and 37. We're going to eliminate somebody right now. St. John 5 and 37. Go ahead and read. And the Father himself. Uh-huh which have sent me, go ahead, have borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Well, how many, how many times does any time call? Come. All time. All time. And you, you ain't never heard the Father's voice at any time or seen his shape. That's food for thought, sisters and brothers. Never. Never. But Israel have seen God. Moses saw God. Yes, sir. 74 elders saw him while they was eating. But then that's in another lesson, sisters and brothers. So the question is, if it wasn't the Father and Jesus was being baptized, who did the talking from heaven? Let's go into Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and find out. Genesis chapter 22. It is good, sisters and brothers, so you can go in this Bible and you can read the people stuff that they think is a great mystery and show them, hey, when it comes to the word of God, if you're a servant of God, he's going to lead you into all truth. This is child's play. Yeah, it is. This is why I had a children's class one time. We had a brother talk something contrary in the, when he was on 75th Street. Two young brothers come up to me. Brother Boy, can we talk to you? Yeah. What you want? I ain't going to call his name. The, bro the brother that was teaching the children's class at that time. Brother so-and-so, so and I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> what you mean? Then they told me what he said, and they quoted the scripture. And I fired the teacher. Anytime you let, I think about maybe a nine or ten-year-old come up there and quote the scripture and show you wrong, how you going to teach them? <laughs> and another brother I removed from teaching because he taught the people well Israel can marry anybody Israel can marry anybody but not according to the law Right? you understand and the law have not changed but then when I see a brother marry outside of Israel and he want to get rid of it I said now you can't do that because you're going to break another law you right. can't put away your wife. Right. You might be like Ruth. Maybe this strange woman will be taking on your God, your people become her people. Everybody be happy. That's why I don't make no big thing of it, but when I'm asked the question, I quote the law. Yes, sir. But I know some situations be good. That's why Miriam was turned white, because she was complaining about Moses marrying in Ethiopia. But then it ain't got nothing to do with the law. People tell me about all the wives that David had and all the wives that Solomon had. The Lord told you, when you set a king over you, he should not add unto him, uh, 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 Why? what's that, horses or wives. Anything more than one is an addition, isn't it? He multiplied, he said. You should not multiply unto him wives. Anything more than one is multiplication. But Solomon and David, I said, they God's problem. If I do it, then it's my problem right. with God. <laughs> ain't going there. It's all that simple. Genesis 22, and we're going to start at verse 1. And what I'm saying, sister and brother, we're going to do this book. If we ain't going to do the book, if you come in here and I ain't doing the book, you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't the Father speaking, we're going to find out who it was that shouted now from heaven. 22 and 1. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. 
Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass out of these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Go ahead. Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Go ahead. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I would tell thee of. So now, Abraham didn't miss words. Skip down to verse 9. Let's see what he did. Go ahead. They came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Him I. Go ahead. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Skip down to verse 15 and read it. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham, out of heaven the second time. So now, who was it that said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please? The angel of the Lord. Couldn't be Jesus because he was being baptized. Couldn't be the father because the books and we ain't never heard his voice at any time. Who's left? The angel of the Lord. That's so simple, ain't it? All you got to do is deal with this book. That's why Paul called it the simplicity of Christ. The simplicity of Christ, sisters and brothers. Now let's go into Revelation, the first chapter. Revelation chapter 1. And you just have two more places after this. Revelation chapter 1. See, but people don't want to deal with simplicity. You want to be able to argue. You want to be able to give your twist to it. Right. Like I always say at funerals, God tell you right there where man is going, that's man and woman, dust thou art, and until dust thou shall return. Don't nobody want to believe that. They all want to put everybody in heaven. They want to have them looking down on you, smiling. But the Lord said, dust thou art until dust thou earth shall return. I didn't see him say, see where he said, dust, your body shall go and your spirit shall go. Your soul shall go to heaven. I never read that. No. Dust thou art and until dust thou shall return. She done made her homecoming. Why are you lying on this woman? <laughs> she come out the ground. When you take her to the graveyard and, and bury her, now she made her homecoming. But don't nobody want to deal with that simplicity, sisters and brothers? Simplicity. You complicate things, therefore you complicate your own chances to get salvation. Revelation 1, we're going to start reading at verse 10. Revelation 1 and 10. Go ahead. I was in the spirit of the Lord on the... I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Go ahead. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. Uh -huh. And send it into the seven churches which are in Asia, into Ephesus, into Smyrna, into Pergamos, into Thyatira, and Sardis, and Philadelphia, and into Laodicea. Now, he said, well, I'm going to tell you, I want you to write in the book and send it to these seven churches. So now, as always, who takes the message to the churches? We're going to find out. Let's go into Revelation, the second chapter now. And we're going to get the first message. Second chapter, rather, Revelation chapter 2. And verse 1, read it. And it's to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, uh -huh. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, he's telling that the angel brought the message. Didn't John in the first chapter say, uh, uh, Jesus in the first chapter, mm -hmm. say he signified to his brother, his servant John, by the hand of an angel? Yep. Remember, it's the angel that brought the message. Tell you from Jump Street. So skip now, well, well maybe young folks don't know what Jump Street means. <laughs> so I better bring it back. Told you from the beginning. 
Okay. <laughs> Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and go ahead. He that have an ear. Now, that's, that's after the angel that gave the message to the churches. Look how he ended this thing. Go ahead. He that have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Uh huh. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, he's giving a message, sisters and brothers. And when he gave the message, he said, he that over have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Ain't that correct? Read verse 8. Go ahead. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, uh -huh. These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Now, let's see. Now, he told a message. Now, he's going to end that message with the same thing. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. Now he's giving a message. Go to verse 12. We're going to go to the next church. Go ahead. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things said he which had the sharp sword with two edges. Now let's go see how he ended that message. Skip down to verse 17 and read it. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Uh huh. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and then the stone a new name written, which no man nor saveth he that receiveth it. Now, skip down to verse 29 and read the end of that message. Go ahead. You don't want to eat 18? Well, read, I'm sorry, 18 now to the next church, to the ne next church. Go ahead and read. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things said the Son of God, who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. See, sisters and brothers, this is one thing I find out. The angel was giving the message, but when John looked back and saw who it was, he, had, he was showing a vision of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But anyway, how did this message end? Skip down to verse 29 and go ahead. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now we're going to go right into Revelation, the third chapter, and verse 1. Read it. And it's at the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy work, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Now what was that, three and one? That was three and one. Let's skip down to verse 6 and end up with that. Go ahead. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Keep reading. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth when no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Now, when he got the message, let's see what he ended this message on. Skip down to verse 13 and read it. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Uh huh. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, and then you know that he was the first one that went from man to God. That's what he means, the beginning of the creation of God. Skip down to verse 22, and how did he end that? He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says said unto the churches. So we know it was the Spirit that testified to the churches. Isn't that what we see? Yes, sir. Repeatedly. He didn't have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Now let's go into Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and get some clarity on this. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. And verse 16. 22 and verse 16. Okay, read. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the church. Wait a minute now. He sent the Spirit to. to oh, I forgot. The angels are spirit angels. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto these, unto thee, unto you these things in the church. Let's finish that verse. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. So all the testimony that he did was by an angel, wasn't it? 
Yes, sir. To all seven churches. Why? Because the Lord operates through angels. Back up and read verse 6. Verse 6. Go ahead. And he said unto me, these things are faithful and true. Uh -huh. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to, to show unto his servants. That's the S, ain't it? Yes, sir. His servants, things which must shortly come to pass. So if you don't know what's going to come in the future, maybe you're serving the wrong God. Are we supposed to know what's going on? That's why people watching what Russia doing in in the, uh, uh, Ukraine. Everybody looking, brother boy, call brother boy. What's going on? I said nothing. <laughs> they concern us. Don't let them go down until they build that temple in Jerusalem. That's it. And the Pope leave Rome and go into it. Then there's gonna be plenty going on. Right. <laughs> You better be watching TV and everywhere else where they're going to say, free ride to the Middle East. <laughs> and run and get on it. But until that time comes, don't trouble yourself. It's all that simple. So now, this lets you know, we know that. Why? Because we have received from the prophets the things that they received from the angel. Yes, sir. And if the angel bring it, it's going to be true, because the Lord said, surely he would do nothing but receive, reveal his secrets unto his prophets. And let's go into the last place. Let's see what got Stephen Stone to death. Let's go into Acts, the seventh chapter. Acts, chapter seven. See, because, sisters and brothers, we are the grown-ups in the word of God. We're going to tell it like it is. Children play. We don't have time to play. No, we don't. Uh-uh. We're going to lay it on the line or we're going to forget it. This is when Stephen was uh, 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 cornered by them Jews. They were trying to discuss scripture with him, and he beat them up in the book because they say they couldn't resist him. Several uh, 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 little Israelite cliques like we got some going on now. And Philip told him, off. But I'm going to tell them cats, I'm telling you off. But remember, Philip didn't have no pistol. They hadn't created them yet. <laughs> you can take that any way you want it. <laughs> Don't even try. <laughs> Acts 7, and we're going to start reading that verse 51. Acts 7 and verse 51. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard in ears. This is, what, this is what he's telling them Jews. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard in ears. You might be circumcised in the flesh, but your mind ain't circumcised right. because you ain't right. Go ahead. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost uh -huh. as your fathers did, so do ye. Didn't they tell you that they vexed his Holy Spirit? Yes, sir. You are just like your father. You resist the message that the Holy Ghost brings. Go ahead and read. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? None of them. Israel persecuted every prophet they had. Go ahead and read. And they have slain them which show before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. And the prophet, you have become the murderers of them who receive the word of God by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Mm -mm. Everything that man got came by the hand of angels. The only time he didn't get something from the angel was Mount Sinai and when Jesus came in the flesh. And even to this day, you dealing with the angels. Yes, God. sir. Because that is the order of things. That is the protocol. So the spirit of truth, that means the one that brings the truth is Gabriel. Thank you for your time.